Good morning, everyone. And again, the week is started with the podcast called Knowledge Empowers. With you is me, Kat Anyaseyo. Then we have Barush. Hello. And we have Kolaj. And uh, good morning, everyone. And we were just discussing before we start to record that maybe, just maybe, we Call should me start... maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that because then we don't need to pay a fee. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> or how is it the first four seconds you don't pay? <laughs> ah, I don't. Oh, oh, okay. So uh, we decided to maybe start doing some book recommendations and uh, we are a lot into like the psychology, like me personally, I love the forensic psychology and you can see something which is uh, at the back of college. Those of you who watch us on YouTube, which I am the same, <laughs> but that we will discuss different, uh, on a different day. So today we're gonna uh, make a recommendation of this book. I'm showing it now on YouTube and now for the podcast, it's called the Red Queen sex and the evolution of a human nature by matt ridley so <laughs> from all three of us on nicolaj read this book <laughs> i'm horrible i have like really nice tons of books but one day i'll start reading them again so college briefly tell us what this book is about uh, okay well the the red queen has nothing to do with the red queen and there, there is a similar book uh and it's i think some sort of a literature for women you know those yeah that that stuff Romantic but this one novels. yeah 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 something like that i i i, I think so uh, but this one <laughs> it's called red queen because of the alice in the wonderland and i can't recall now why for what reason was that uh, but the book is about the evolution and the psychological perspective on evolution uh, in terms of a lot of aspects of our human lives and how it fits our reproduction cycle. So to be uh, really into details, for example, the authors who are evolutional psychologists are talking about and trying to explain uh, what is their view on uh, for example, mating or why we have two sexes from the evolutional perspective or the psychological and evolution perspective. So why it's two sexes, why it's not like 100 because there are bacteria which have like whatever, six or seven or 100. And why we as a humans, why we don't have 100, why, why we don't have three or five, but why there is exactly two. Uh, then they are establishing why, for example, we have one partner when looking from the evolution perspective, it would be great to mate as often as possible to have as much offspring as you can get. So, you know, like having kids everywhere. So why is it? So if it's actually natural to have just have kids everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> true. It's Seven billion of us here. <laughs> Seven billion of kids. So, so they are talking about whether it's natural to have one partner or multiple partners for uh, during the life uh, for one person. And uh, like if there is an animal in the nature who has just one partner when there is multiple and stuff like that and how we compare it. And uh, <clears throat> and then they are going also into details about the various shapes of various organs and uh, uh, the length uh, of intercourse and stuff like that. So you can read about those and they are comparing it to others like gorillas and chimpanzees and everything like that. So, so they are pretty interesting and really unusual facts which you wouldn't expect to be exactly like <laughs> the, the, the thing you want to read first <laughs> but uh, but i would give this book uh through its uh for its hum humor and explanation style uh, i would give it like a recommendation to read maybe eight maybe nine out of the ten so oh. it's 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 really nice uh, reading uh, not for everyone of course because it's about like unusual topic and not everybody will fo feel mm. comfortable about it. And uh, of course it's about the psychological stuff. So part of it, so well, there you go. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, let's continue with the part of 
improve your empathy is it even possible <laughs> uh, i i think is it, it is uh, i i think it is uh, that well when the last time when we talked uh, we talked about the empathy part uh, which is the emotional part cognitive part and then acting on it so like okay you can feel the same like the others do then you can do there is some cognitive process behind it and then you act upon it and the emotional i don't think that it's that that is like i would say more birth given but the cognitive can be really well trained that's how i trained my empathy a lot uh, uh and and learned about that uh, a lot when it comes to that can you give us an example okay uh, so for example imagination uh imagining how the others feel is cognitive empathy because you are putting yourself to other shoes and that's a mental process which is a cognitive one active listening is a cognitive one but i'm now doing a step ahead so so that, that that's what i was uh, trying to go for um before we talked about the barriers so to understand what we can improve we need to know what is behind that so what are the obstacles in our empathy and how then we can bypass them and when we were talking about the barriers before uh we put them into categories like okay so differences so there is a huge difference between me and you so i'm not gonna somehow empathize with you uh the safety fear that's that's another part of it like i don't feel safe i'm afraid of some someone something i'm not gonna empathize with somebody else when i'm afraid of of you that you are gonna beat me i'm not gonna empathize with you sorry but no that that's not how it works i i think that's a very spread phenomenon these days true like racism yep. and xenophobia like a lot of people are like this i think these times are a really good example of that like people are afraid they are going to lose their basic things like in the pyramid of needs right? needs yep. Yep. but did then, you guys yep. mm -hmm. sorry just a little bit of sidebar uh if you guys watch soccer or in europe football uh especially for example when it's champion leagues and this is now what past 20 years they always all these soccer players are doing um that they are against of racism and it really goes like more than 20 years and yet nothing changed nothing at all and these all these soccer players are still attacked and not just them but it's just unbelievable that yet they're fighting against of racism but there is no effect at all that was why just do you my think that there. is i, I still oh. think it's, there is a lack of education and and explaining people that just because you have a different skin color or a religion at the end we are still humans and we're supposed to behave to one another as a human being we all bleed the same well funny yeah. thing is that the racism is learned you know so it's not mm -hmm. like you you are born, born and like yeah. and i'm gonna hate everybody else with different color that that's not our natural instinct uh and but it's it's more about being taught and who actually then educate it's then it's more about the education even more because who educates our kids that actually this is bad or this so is the wrong stuff. you don't think it's anything about what you just said like fear um i would say it is about fear but it's a learned fear it's not a natural one mm -hmm. okay. because when the baby is born they don't have any necessary experience to be afraid of different race or different uh religion mm -hmm. as they are being raised by their parents by the community by the teachers everyone around them they are telling them biases like oh you don't you can't speak to it to a stranger because you know the stranger can harm you that's already a bias which will mm -hmm. tell you if there is somebody else i don't know i shouldn't speak to them i should be afraid of them which which is not a natural instinct because usually people want to survive so they're gonna be talking so, to other people or somehow interact with other people so we are now like okay so there is 
suddenly you can't trust everyone. There is only our community which you can trust you. Mm -hmm. And then it goes even further and further and further, you know, like there are news, like, okay, we have terrorists around us and usually it's connected with, uh, or, or with, with the Middle East, you know, like terrorists are there or something happened in here. And when you change the language, like fighters for the freedom, mm, okay, usually the, those guys are us, our guys, you know, fighters for the freedom, but it's still the same, you know, like fighter for the freedom or terrorism can be at the same time the same thing yeah. mm -hmm. so, so uh, and it could be even the same people you know it's just about the perspective how you look on it so so that's how more biases and prejudices are actually involved in our in our consciousness and our subconsciousness this is what kim scott actually started to uh she she wrote a new book book you probably know the radical candor from from her uh, but now she released a new book, uh, which is called Just Work, which is talking exactly how to fight bias, prejudice, and bullying uh, at your workplace. And she devised a plan that, or a plan, uh, they have, what I was, uh, she was talking about, that they have purple flags on their meetings. And they use these purple flags whenever, uh, whenever somebody says, some biased words so for example like elderly people and they starting waving the flag <laughs> like okay let's not talk about the elderly people because that's a biased word let's talk about seniors mm, uh, to use the right see the difference so to use different <laughs> wording for for every biased word so like okay so when we are talking about newbies flag mm -hmm. let's talk mm -hmm. about juniors or unexperienced mm -hmm. or like these people or something like that. So I, 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 maybe, I don't know. I don't see the difference. What's the difference between el elderly, senior, and um, what's biased about one and not biased about the other? Yeah, that, that, that's one thing I'm struggling <laughs> to as well with, uh, but I understand that with, uh, with some categories, it could be hard because these biases towards the words are connected with the culture. Okay. And even age. You can say elderly means like elderly you use maybe maybe you think people about 60 70 senior even i'm senior because i already worked 22 years so i have my seniority but not necessarily i'm i'm old from age i wouldn't call myself elderly person yet yeah. <laughs> but, i mean in from that perspective senior is also every word is biased Oh, yeah. Sort of, sort of, yes. And uh, and I haven't read the book, so I'm not sure how deep she goes. Uh, but I understand that some of the biases could be uh, really deep within us and okay. could be pointed to and actually subtracted. So I, th I think there is. English hmm. is not our native language. Yeah, and and for us, the words mean something else uh, yeah. compared to the native speaker. So mm -hmm. it's the same when I open the word with Simon Sinek about the uh, and I use the word convince how can I convince people to da, 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 da. and he really attacked that word you're already thinking it in the wrong way because you want to convince them and then I had to stop him and say my apologies that's not where I want to concentrate it's just I use the word convince because it means something else um, let's say for me uh, in, in, in my language, but I really wanted to focus that if we put this much energy into it, quality, da, 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 how can I, if, even am I able to do something about it? Yes, no. And then he was, ah, okay. And then he refocused his, his thoughts. So mm -hmm. it's really about, um, especially for us non-native speakers to learn also the right words because they, they might have different type of meaning and depth for the native speakers mm -hmm. compared to us. So, so what are we were talking about? <laughs> okay, so, so this was the empathy, safety, differences, uh, how we are raised with these biases, or actually how we are taught these biases, how we how those biases get into our head, uh, and then and there. I, I yeah. would also add to that that uh, the best way you can manipulate with more humans is through fear. That's the most easiest mm -hmm. way. How how some leaders can manipulate with more humans but if if we would it's like uh there are these youtube videos where there is this uh one black guy and here we come with the biased words so 
Afro-American person. Um, and he is talking to uh, people from Ku Klux Klan, but he always invites just one, one member of a Ku Klux Klan. And he just talked to that person about his life. Mm -hmm. And he's really showing to that member of, of KKK that I'm a human being like you. And this is my son, this is my family. And, and just through this talk, or talks, he was able to convince, now I'm going to use the word convince, that they left the KKK. But it was really because people are having lack of experience with either people from different culture or skin color or and and because someone else teaches us that fear you're you're so scared of another human being which is ridiculous right and and that's when i'm wondering and or that's why i like watching some of the sci-fi movies when when they show you that we progressed as humans so fast that that's a topic that you don't even discuss, but we hold together as human beings as, as, as one, as one nature or as one, like what, like earth, earth is one <laughs> country, let's say, right. <laughs> but that will take us still <laughs> a long time ahead of us until we'll be able to move above all our egos and mammonism and stuff like that. So let's use this example uh, where you just said this, the story of, uh, the KKK and uh, some Afro-American guy talking to them. Mm -hmm. So what did, he, what did he do during the talk or what, what happened during the talk? Like if you could break it down into smaller parts, what, what helped to build the empathy between these two worlds? I only know the story. I didn't watch any, any video. <laughs> no, no, no. Just from the story, what you heard, there, there are some certain aspects to, towards the discussion which you already said. Oh. Like just let's name them, you know? He just shared like his life, like that he's a father, mm -hmm. like the other guy was. Okay, so that's yeah. that's that's one already finding one similarities. Similarities. That, that's one. Um, what he is af af afraid or feared for his children, and that was another one because that because the other guy was also a father, so they had the same fear for their children, right? Um. And he just showed him that I'm just like a, a human like you are. Mm -hmm. I just have a different yeah. color of my skin. So 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 they definitely created a bond through mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. he for, he forced him to actively actively listen to that mm -hmm. person because they were one on one. So that's another thing. Active listening exactly. helps a lot <clears throat> to the empathy. Uh or, or another thing is that they've created a certain rapport because they saw seeing that they are really similar to each other. So they build a rapport and mm -hmm. the relationship sort of it. So one person can actually imagine how the other person sees. And it, yeah, the person actually didn't even have to imagine. He was inside his house or wherever and saw his life. So he actually walked the other person's shoes. So exactly this imagination is another way how to cognitively build the empathy. So how to think about, okay, so me being you what it would be like and uh, now that we have the same fears i know what it would be like so again going through this empathetic part uh, and uh, <clears throat> through that actually i think that um the guy from the kkk at, at the end put his ego aside so uh, in terms of like this is me and my small bubble but actually being part of something bigger in these terms because suddenly the it was part of the community. It wasn't just mm -hmm. like my household and my decision, but okay, we are in it together. So the ego was aside. So these are actually tips how you can build up the empathy for yourself as well. This is everything what, what you sh can, should, should, can, whatever uh, you can play with when you are trying to build empathy with somebody. You can go from the, uh, from the physical aspects from active listening through rapport, which is physical way of how to build up uh, the empathy into the conscious and subconscious way. So into like put the ego aside, like, okay, so it's not about me, it's about you and let's hear you, the active listening again, uh, sort of it and finding something what we have in common, you know, like 
okay, uh, we are both working for the, uh, we are both living in the same neighborhood. We are working for the same company. If you want to apply to the same team, for, for the same team or in, in, uh, uh, in uh, corporations, you know, like, okay, so he is my same team member and we want to achieve this result. So we have this in common. So why should I be competing, uh, competing with you or struggling with you about giving you an access to some tool or whatever. So, you know, like th this are the examples which you can imagine, like as a, as a daily basis, you know, like, oh, your Excel doesn't look good or uh, this is, has been done wrong. You know, if we are striving for the same achievement, that's it. I wonder, I wonder what, what, the, uh, what the title of this recording will be because we've yeah, got a lot difficult. of stuff. <laughs> uh, going from the book through, through empathy and, and, uh, and bias, sure. <laughs> cool i think that that's, this is it for today uh thank you for watching us or listening to us wherever you are whether it's us uh slovakia or china uh, thank you for tuning in for this week's session and today with you there was kat sugasha smida barush bye bye and me myself matye ciao ciao goodbye this podcast represents our own opinions, experience and our own ideas. We do not represent any official statement from our employers and this is not their official channel representing the company.